Good morning and welcome to morning prayer on this Thursday, the 16th of July. We're using the same order for morning prayer uh, for ordinary time. So if you've got a copy of that and want to put it out, that would be great. Uh, the readings and the Psalms are Psalm 113, 113 and 115, 115. The Old Testament is 1 Samuel chapter 2, verses 27 to the end. And the New Testament is Luke 20, verse 9 to 19. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. God, be gracious to us and bless us, and make his face to shine upon us. Be known upon earth your saving power among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. O let the nations rejoice and be glad, for you will judge the peoples righteously and govern the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Then shall the earth bring forth her increase, and God, our own God, will bless us. God will bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed. And the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. And our first psalm is Psalm number. 113, 113. Alleluia. Give praise, you servants of the Lord. O oh, praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth forevermore. From the rising of the sun to its setting, let the name of the Lord be praised. The Lord is high above all nations and his glory above the heavens. Who is like the Lord our God, that has his throne on so high, yet humbles himself to behold the things of heaven and earth? He raises the poor from the dust, and lifts the needy from the ashes. And with princes, and the princes, with the princes of his people, he gives the barren woman a place in the house, and makes her a joyful mother of children. Alleluia. And Psalm 115. Not to us, Lord, not to us, but to your name give the glory, for the sake of your loving mercy and truth. Why should the nations say, where is now their God? As for our God, he is in heaven, he does whatever he pleases. Their idols are silver and gold, the work of human hands. They have mouths but cannot speak, eyes have they but cannot see. They have ears but cannot hear, noses have they but cannot smell. They have hands but cannot feel, feet have they but cannot walk. Not a whisper do they make from their throats. Those who make them shall become like them, and so will all who put their trust in them. But you, Israel, put your trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. House of Aaron, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. You that fear the Lord, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. The Lord has been mindful of us, and he will bless us. May he bless the house of Israel. May he bless the house of Aaron. May he bless those who fear the Lord, both small and great together. May the Lord increase you more and more, you and your children after you. May you be blessed by the Lord, 
the maker of heaven and earth. The heavens are the heavens of the Lord, but the earth he is in trust children. The dead do not praise the Lord, nor those gone down into silence. But we will bless the Lord from this time forth forevermore. Alleluia. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Now and forever. Amen. And our first reading is from the book of Samuel, first book of Cham Samuel, chapter 2, verses 27 to the end. And there came a man of God to Eli and said to him, Thus the Lord has said, I revealed myself to the house of your father, when they were in Egypt, subject to the house of Pharaoh. And I chose him out of all the tribes of Israel to be my priests, to go up to my altar, to burn incense, to wear an ephod before me. And I gave to the house of your father all my offerings by fire from the people of Israel. Why then look with greedy eye at my sacrifices and my offerings which I commanded and honour your sons above you, me by fattening yourselves upon the choicest parts of every offering of my people Israel. Therefore the Lord, the God of Israel, declares, I promised that your house and the house of your father should go in and out before me forever. But now the Lord declares, far be it for me, for those who honour me I will honour, and those who despise me shall be lightly esteemed. Behold, the days are coming when I will cut off your strength and the strength of your father's house, so that there will not be an old man in your house. Then in distress you will look with envious eye on all the prosperity which shall be bestowed upon Israel, and there shall not be an old man in your house forever. The man, the man of you whom I shall not cut off from my altar shall be spared to weep out his eyes and grieve his heart, and all the increase of your house shall die by the sword of men. And this which shall befall your two sons, Hophne and Phinehas, shall be the sign to you. Both of them shall die on the same day. And I will raise up for myself a faithful priest who shall do according to what is in my heart and in my mind. And I will build him a sure house and he shall go in and out before my anointed forever. And everyone who is left in your house shall come to implore him for a piece of silver or a loaf of bread, and shall say, Put me, I pray you, in one of the priest's places, that I may eat a morsel of bread. Here ends the first of the readings. And our canticle. I have given you as a light to the nations, and I have called you in righteousness. Thus says God, who created the heavens, who fashioned the earth and all that dwells in it, who gives breath to the people upon it, and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord, and I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the captives from the dungeon, from the prison those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. I have given you as a light to the nations, and I have called you in righteousness. And so to our second lesson from Luke chapter 20, 
verses 9 to 19. And Jesus began to tell the people this parable. A man planted a vineyard and let it out to tenants and went into another country for a long time. When the time came, he sent a servant to the tenants that they should give him some of the fruit of the vineyard. But the tenants beat him and sent him away empty handed. And he sent another servant him also they beat and treated shamefully and sent him away empty handed. And he sent yet a third. This one they wounded and cast out. Then the owner of the vineyard said, what shall I do? I will send my beloved son. It may be they will respect him. But when the tenants saw him, they said to the, themselves, this is the heir. Let us kill him that the inheritance may be ours. And they cast him out of the vineyard and killed him. What then will the owner of the vineyard do to them? He will come and destroy those tenants and give the vineyard to others. When they heard this, they said, God forbid. But he looked at them and said, what then is this that is written? The very stone which the builders rejected has become the head of the corner. Everyone who falls on that stone will be broken to pieces, but when it falls on anyone, it will crush him. The scribes and the chief priests tried to lay hands on him at that very hour, but they feared the people, so they perceived that he told this parable against them. Here ends the second lesson. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I'll be with you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned. I have called you by name, you are mine. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. You promised, O God, to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He's raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. You promised, O God, to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us. And so to our intercessions. Heavenly Father, we give thanks for this new day, for the gift of each breath, for the gift of life. We pray for this wayward world full of war and violence. We pray particularly for the places of war. We pray for the Yemen and for northern Iraq and Syria. We pray for all who are living in refugee camps both on the northern Iraq Syria border and also in Myanmar, in Rohingya people. We pray for those who work for humanitarian organizations, 
seeking to bring, bring relief to the dispossessed. We pray for the world in this pandemic of COVID-19, for the doctors and nurses working on the front line across the world, for those researching, doctors and scientists seeking a vaccine. We pray for all who are afraid, for those who fear other illnesses and the very fact of going to a doctor and feeling afraid. We pray for our diocese, for David and Mark, our bishops, our archdeacon, Harry Dean, for the parish of St. Mark's, for all the work being done to maintain and sustain the ministry and life of the parish. We pray for the journey in the process of seeking a new incumbent. We pray for those that we know that are sick as we name them and hold them before God in the silence of our hearts. Lord, surround and uplift all who suffer that they may know of your healing power. And we pray for the faithful departed, those whose life journey has come to an end recently, and all those that we remember who have died at this time of the year. Rest eternal, grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. And in a moment of quiet, we bring before God those particular prayers that we have on our hearts. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And the colic set for Thursday morning prayer. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you as eternal life, to serve you as perfect freedom, defend us, your servants, from all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in our defence, may not fear the power of any adversaries. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil, and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, thank you for joining me in morning prayer. And I look forward to seeing you in church. I hope in the not too distant future, but we're not going to rush at it. We're going to make sure everything's in place and everybody's safe before the church is opened. But if not, I hope you join me, same place, same time next week for morning prayer on Thursday. Thank you, stay safe, God bless. <laughs>